we bring in a couple of thousand to burn the place? Why? Because, because man is proud and man thinks he knows better than God. You say dinosaurs, did you know, did you know, do you know? <laughs> Have you noticed something? Have you noticed something in this discussion? I have given him the mic and we have dialogue. You won't get that with the BBC. They won't let me on the BBC. But I'll let the BBC use my mic, but they won't let me use their mic. I'll let him use my mic because I believe in free speech. I believe whatever your beliefs are, you have free speech. But let me just get back. Let me just get back to what, we was, what, what did you say? Right, about, about dinosaurs. Did you know that we found blood in dinosaurs? in a dinosaur. So, they can't have been built millions of years old because that blood won't be there, bro. Why? Because the Bible tells Well, if you're telling me that blood can last for millions of years, well, I, I, I can't see how that can be scientific. No, 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 so, no. so, I don't think the earth is as old as we think it is if we found blood in a dinosaur, bro. Over to you. <coughs> right, straight off, right? We didn't find blood in a dinosaur. We found marrow bones which has been fossilised for millions of years, which can survive. It's got nothing to do with blood. It's not Jurassic Park where we inject the mosquito. If that would never work, that's been proven to never work. But DNA from marrow bone could work. They're already thinking about bringing back a mammoth. That is trained blood. So where's your blood to step into that? Is the blood in marrow bone. Oh, there we are. End of that. Right. Let me ask you some questions. You've asked me some questions. Let me ask you some questions. How can the universe have been created from nothing? There's nothing, there ain't nothing here. How can the universe have been created from nothing? Over to you, bro. That's called nature. It's called nature. Where does your God come to create the universe? Apparently he creates man, he creates the earth in seven days. He had the, he had the seven day off because he's a lazy kid, by the way. <laughs> you know, he could have done so much more on that extra day, but he didn't do nothing. But where in the Bible does it mention God created the universe? Or universes, which have been proven to exist, by the way. So does that mean there's, what, we've discovered 12 universes, so there's 12 gods per universe? Is that how it works? Is it mathematical like that? I'm going to read my fiction now. So where does it say that God created the universe? Are you ready? Now just remember, in the 19th century, scientists said that math is eternal. Right, listen, scientists said in the 19th century that matter was eternal. Are you ready? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the, earth. the heavens and the earth. Right? So, it's saying, it's saying that creation had a beginning. Guess what? The Bible got here before scientists in the 1920s and 30s and 40s said the earth had a beginning. God, the Bible, already got there. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. 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 What was the next point you wanted to say? The next point was, you said heaven. Even today, look at the heavens as a sky. If you reverse the stars in the sky, so what strength is beyond the sky? And the you say God sits on a cloud doing whatever. I've looked at so many clouds, I've never seen anyone sat up there going, hello! Okay. Before I just go on, we've got to agree that whether you agree with me or disagree, we're going to be friends. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of hate. And if we, if, if we can't have a rational discussion, it's time to give up. And you're a very nice man, so thank you for that, okay? Now, when you're reading any ancient literature, whether you're reading the Quran or the Bible, or any ancient literature, you've got to always get it in its historical context. Context. Context, context. When you read, when you read Genesis chapter 1, it's obvious about the creation of the universe. I would encourage you to read it. Now, what I asked him was this. I said, how, how did you create, how did something come from nothing? And if my friend here, my good friend, if you notice, he didn't answer it. It's, it's called switching bait. He said, how do you prove it that God created the universe? But he's not answered that question yet. How can something that does not exist, nothing, come into existence? How can that happen? 
It's not possible. It's not scientific. If you could answer that, bro, I'd be very grateful. It's not a kindergarten, huh? Oh, sorry, is it got red? You speak about nothing. It's not so much an answer, speak it's more of a description. This God okay. If kill, child, someone created woman. everything, who the heck created God? Okay. I'm going to answer that, but just remember, scientific materialism cannot answer the question how something came from nothing. It's not scientific, end of. Okay? It's an assumption. You look at light, it's billions of, stretches billions of years, and so you assume that there was a big bang. That's an assumption. No one can prove that something came from nothing scientifically. You try to do that. You try to make an orange appear from nothing there. You can't do it. Now he said, how can God create something? Because who created God? What you've done is what I would call a category, a category mistake. The creation is physical. It's matter and energy. Yeah, but when you're talking about God, we're talking about an eternal being. So when you say, how can an eternal being who created him, it's not logical because that which is eternal cannot have anybody that has created the eternal. It cannot be. So you're, category, you're making a category mistake. Now let me get you on to another subject. No, you can't use the word eternal and then say, oh yeah, well the eternal didn't create it. Sorry, you can't use the word eternal being and say there isn't an eternal being that made the eternal being. Or else the word eternal wouldn't even exist, would it? Not my friend. The, the greatest idea of all ideas is that there is a God who knows all, everything and has always existed. There is no greater idea than that. So to say that there was another God or other gods that created that God it, is nonsensical. There's got to be at the end of the chain someone who was always there who is all powerful. Now let me ask you a question. What is your opinion about Jesus Christ? Now let me just tell you what I believe. Right? I believe that he died, that he rose again, that he is the Son of God, that he's my Lord and Saviour. Now, you, can you tell me, or give me some critique, of why you don't believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, why you don't believe he died and rose again? Okay? If you can do that, if you can show me that Jesus did not rise again, you have effectively defeated Christianity. It is as simple as this. So many thousands of years ago, when people had less technology, less ideas, less intelligence, apparently someone wrote a book about someone coming back to life in a cave, it wasn't even put in a cave, moved out of the cave, and apparently come back to life. Maybe someone rubbed his freaking body because he was famous. Okay. Bear in mind they were like four foot tall and God knows what then. We live in a world these days where, you know, we watch films with magic and everything else. We don't ex believe it exists. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus could do magic. So it doesn't exist anymore? 2,000 years ago, Jesus come to do miracles. He's coming to help people. He's come to save everyone. Where is he now? That we actually need him, we're actually helping, we're actually asking for his help. Where is he? That is all I'm saying. That's the only proof I've got and the only proof I need. Okay, I'll give you two points. First point is about scientific method. The scientific method, in the 1920s, scientists generally believed that you could have 100% scientific proof. But then they discovered quantum physics, quantum mechanics, and they realized that they could never say there is a fact that is 100% a fact scientifically because they realized there were things that were popping into existence at the physical level, quarks and things like that, that they couldn't say 100% what was a fact because it could change. So they said, sir, sir, Brian, 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 it's okay, it's okay, we're having a respectful conversation, thank you. Let, 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 let me just finish. Let, let people finish. Let me people finish. Let, let me finish my point. Brian, Brian, let me finish my point because it needs to hear it. Science said that facts is 100% prior to 1920. Then they discovered quantum physics. They realized they had to be more humble. You have to say 60 or 70% what we say is right. Now, how does that work with miracles? Nobody can say that miracles cannot actually happen. You cannot say miracles cannot actually happen because scientifically it's possible that something could come into our universe that we've not computed. Secondly, 
on the history of Jesus. Number one, Jesus died. We've got evidence outside the Bible. Josephus, 110 AD, an enemy of Jesus said that Jesus died. Tacitus, Roman historian, an enemy of Jesus, said that Jesus died. 110 AD. These are enemies against Jesus. That is historical evidence that he died. Listen, it's so much in evidence that Dominic Crossan, who is an atheist skeptic, said this, that Christ dying on the cross is one of the most well-attested facts in ancient history. In history. Secondly, that he rose again. Are you ready for this? Women's testimony in the time of Jesus was only worth half that of a man. Right? Yeah. Women's testimony was only worth half that of a man. You would not start a religion in the time of Jesus with women, especially in Judaism. You wouldn't do it. So, who were the first people to say that Jesus rose from the dead? It was women. Not only women, some of the women were desolate women in their time, known as prostitutes. You would not start a religion with women, yet it was women that testified that he rose again. That is why, that is why, sir, that is why, that is why most historians will say they don't believe in a, a miraculous res resurrection, but they do believe that the disciples did see something. Not a, not a mystical thing, but they believe in a physical resurrection. Well, straight off, the disciples were clearly that drunk on the holy wine. They didn't know what they were seeing. They believed in something that they believed in that much. They wanted to come back. Which even happens these days, you know? How many people believe in, you know? How many people in this audience, put your hand up, believe in dinosaurs? Well, they existed once. Yeah. Just dinosaurs, simple as. How many people believe science could bring them back these days? All right, let's rephrase it. How many people have seen the program and where they're trying to bring the woolly mammoth back? That's called Flame Cross. If you've ever, I know it sounds really sad, but if you ever watched Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park was perfect sense to listen to Malcolm. You know about the chaos theory? It goes on about butterfly flaps and swings in Beijing, get rains in New York. Exactly the same thing. That's all it is, chaos theory. Chaos is everything. You know, everyone, look, look at everyone walking around here. They look like they're organised in their normal, everyday life. You look around, it's so freaking chaotic. The people dodging people, everyone dodging this, everyone avoiding that. That is chaos. The world is run by chaos, not some crazy deity. He said it, it, his whole argument against Christianity is chaos theory. Listen. Was it chaos that created this mobile, mobile form or intelligence? Was it chaos or was it intelligence that created that mobile phone? In your DNA, you have information in your DNA. You have a DNA code. Now, in the Encyclopedia Britannica, you have information. And minds put that information in the Encyclopedia Britannica. And there are many, many books. Now, in his body, in my body, in your body, is DNA. And in that DNA, there is more information than in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Now if a mind put the information in the Encyclopedia Britannica, it could only be a mind that put the information in your code, in, in your DNA, that code. That's why uh, Anthony Flew, who was an atheist, did not become a Christian, but he did believe in God, one of the great atheists of the 20th century. When he heard that argument and heard the evidence, he became a believer in God and left his atheism because he couldn't deny that there was information in the DNA which proved that a mind put that information there. Not chaos. It can't be chaos that has created the complexity of the design of the DNA code. There is chaos. The Bible says it's because man has rebelled against God. And if I go and kill someone, if I go and rape someone, it will bring chaos in the world. And creation and the world is is groaning under man's crap, man's messed up. Man has done the environment in, man has done it in. That is the chaos that we see today, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man has done it in, but man has done it in under God's name. God told us to advance, God told us to do this, God told us that. I am one of them people that would quite happily go back to the Middle Ages and hunt my own food, build my own house, cut my own wood, I couldn't be homeless myself, 
I've been homeless around here for 18 months. I've even tried talking to your God, everyone's God, Allah, this, Hare Krishna, nothing. I'm still in the exact same situation I was. So where's the help in my How are you doing? I'm sure these good people here on us will help you see, in, in any way we can. None of these people here will help you. We'll all help you. But I was homeless. I was homeless once in Worcester. But I still find God. It depends on your sincerity. Do you really want to find God? Do you really want to know Him? And then you've got to pack in things that God doesn't like. If you're going to get to know God, you've got to say, these things that I'm doing, I'm not going to do them and seek Him and you will find Him. God loves you. He knew when Christ died on that cross, he knew the issues and the challenges that you faced and he loved you and still died for you. The woman at the well, she had five husbands and an extra guy. She had six guys and yet Jesus still went and died for her even though she had issues. And he, he loves you bro and he died for you bro. Can I tell you a quick story? There was this girl, she went to Puerto Rico to become a prostitute. Her mom was crying and broken hearted. She couldn't find, she went to Puerto Rico to find a daughter, she couldn't find a daughter. She couldn't find her. Anyhow, she left pictures of herself all over the hotels and all the, all the shops. She went home crying her eyes out. Guess what happened? The daughter came downstairs with the client. She goes into the, into the hotel, the toilet, and she sees a picture of her mom. She picks the picture up. She says, that's my mom. She turns it around and the handwriting said this. I don't care what you have done, come home. And God says to you today, bro, I don't care what you have done, I don't care what you have done, come home. He loves you, bro, and he wants you to come home and know that love. He wants you to know it, and he died for you, bro, he gave his life for you, bro. And he died for you, mate. You know what, like you were saying the entire time, God is here for me, he loves me, he does this, he does that, he does everything. There's literally no one done anything in my life, including my parents, who was eight years old apart from myself. I'm 28 years old now. That's 20 years I've made sure I stay alive. It's got nothing to do with family, it's got nothing to do with deities, it's got nothing to do with people. So if your deity is so merciful and everything else, there was a guy sat down there earlier with a sign on saying, God is merciful for me even though I've got sin. Oh no, it's this guy, look. I've got millions of things. Yeah, I guarantee when I get up to these if it exists, I get up to the gates of heaven, they will bring you straight down to the dark and set you No repenting is ever going to do that. So why are you making people believe that if they do anything wrong and they pray to God, they're going to get to heaven and they're going to live a happy eternity? Let's understand the message. It's a really good question that you asked, bro. If your kidney, kidney's packed up, right? And they did some blood tests, and my kidney, one of my kidneys could save you, right? And I said, here, I have one of my kidneys, your kidneys are packed up. Would you take my kidney? You wouldn't take it? Right. I'm one of them humans that can't keep normal, so you can't feel the cold and everything. I'm one of them human beings that happily accept that we all live and end in the same way. When, how, and whatever is not up to us. What I'm trying to get at, bro, is I would have given you a gift. That would be my kidney to save you that your kidneys are packed up, yeah? Now, if you reject my kidney, the thing that can save you, you've rejected it. Now, listen, God has given you a kidney to save you, and that's called Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one that can save you. He is the gift that God has given you. He's the gift. Now, it's up to you to take that gift. It's not just about praying. It's about receiving the gift in your heart. It's about believing him in your heart. It's about receiving Jesus in your heart. When you receive the gift, if, if on your birthday, I put 500 quid in an envelope as a present for you, as a gift, and you don't open it, you're the one that's not gonna get a blessing from the gift. God has given you more than 500 quid. He's given you his son, Jesus, so that you could have new life now, and that you could go to heaven. You wouldn't believe that I used to be a bank robber. You wouldn't believe that he used to be a drug dealer. But he's changed us, he's made us anew. Not you, bro. <laughs> Not this gentleman here, bro. You know, he comes in your life and he changes you. He gives you a new life, a new hope, and a new way, bro. And that's what he wants for you, mate. 
Right, I'm going to ask you a personal question. You can answer whether you want to or not. Have you ever been in prison? Yes. Yes, I thought so. I've been in prison myself. I did, uh, I don't know, six years to four and a half. And I've seen so many people turn to God in prison because they've done this, they've done that, it's so bad, it's everything else. And they get a decent turn. But if they go to church and God forgives them, they're going to live a happier life. It's crap. Look how many people are around here, right? They're all going to work, they're doing this, they've got families, they've got loved ones, everything else. But they're still saying they're not happy. So where do you have a happy life coming? Okay, so the idea that if you become a Christian, you're hiding from the problems of life. Bro, how many Christians are being slaughtered and killed for their faith every year? Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands of Christians are dying for their faith. Have you ever gone into Liverpool, where I am, stood on a stepladder and preached, had a hundred years around you, and while you're on the floor, they're kicking, the head, kicking you in and punching you? I don't call that being cowardly. I call that being brave, bro. Listen, listen. I ain't hiding from problems. I've seen suffering in my family. I've seen difficulties. So this argument is, is not the case. Skeptics, I would say, are hiding from reality, from real life. They're, 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 they're hiding from it because they're the ones that can't face reality, bro. Straight off, right? I did three and a half years in the British Army. I did two tours in Iraq. I saw one of my mates blow up like a balloon on an IED. I pull up with more than getting stamped on by a crowd of people. Where was your God when my mate got blown up like a piece of paint? My friend, God is everywhere. God is all knowing. He's here, bro. He's here for you Where right now. He's here right now. Where was he when I wanted him? Nowhere. Anytime. I don't want him. It says, the Bible says, the Bible says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. If you really want him, right now? If, if you really want, listen, be honest with yourself. You've been arguing with me and debating with me that this God that I believe in does not exist. So you can't turn around to me and say, I cried to God, I want to know God, but uh, sincerely, you're arguing against it. It doesn't make that. sense. No, no, it's no, no, a contradiction, no, no. bro. Either... i tested his existence. You can't test... Listen, if you had a girlfriend uh, or a wife, let's imagine you have a wife. You're married to her, right? Are you married or not married when you're married to her? If you're married to a woman, you're either married to her or you're not married to her. It's no good saying to the woman, I don't know if I'm married to you. I think I might be married to you. I want to question whether I'm married to you. You're either married, listen, you're either married or you're not married. You either want to follow God and seek, seek Him, or you don't. Okay? While we're on this conversation, can I just make a point that I am the one person in the world that would never get married for the exact reason of I could never be stuck to one person in my life. I don't know whether that makes me horrible and nasty to everyone. I don't really care. <laughs> but, yeah, all I'm saying is, I don't know. I don't know. Where is, where, where, where's the proof? If you come down 2,000 years ago and you had all this amazing magic to do that then, imagine how powerful he's going to be there. He'd come down here and go, you want a city? Poof, there's the city. You want this? Poof, there's that. You do as I tell you, you can have it. So why is he not doing it? Where is he apart from people on the street saying, this is what they say? Thank you very much. Um, not sure if I'm a believer or an atheist or something in between, but to answer your question, um, where is God? Why is God not helping me when my friend is blown up in Iraq and so forth? Well, I think we're all maybe thinking about God the wrong way. I think there is a fractal map from your own sentience, subjectively, all the way back to an objective God. So maybe the whole world is God playing out existence through us for eternity. And also, like, you're saying that you could never commit to one person for your life. Well, that might be part of the issue. You need to commit to something. An open oven bakes no bread. And, you know, the one thing God doesn't have is limits. And that's why we exist in this world. We are God's test of how good we can be, how decent we can be to exist. I don't think there's a man up in the clouds. I think God is inside you somewhere really, really deep that you have to find yourself. And, and that's it. Thank you. Now he's going to disagree with you. I agree with that and he's well, going to disagree with you. Well, the, 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 the 
Thank you for your sharing. Thank you. Yeah? Thank you. I've just and been told to leave you alone, by the way. No, so you, don't have to, you don't have to leave me. You stay. You stay. You stay. I've been told. I've got my point across. I've got to leave. No, you don't have to leave. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in charge of the mic. You don't have to leave, yeah? What? I believe in free speech. Good. And I will die to defend your free speech. There's not enough of it these days, yeah? by the way. Not enough free speech. People take too much and offense I'm not to too many afraid things. of intellectual discussion and debate, okay? So, I just want to come back about who is God. My friend here said it's like a fractal, or some subjective thing moving into some kind of objectivity. Jesus said this, we worship God in spirit and in truth. So first of all, Jesus teaches that God is a spirit and that there is truth. Those are two fundamental things about God, that is truth and spirit. Secondly, that God is a trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. In the Bible, it shows us, listen, that God plans salvation, Jesus comes to accomplish salvation, and the Holy Spirit comes to reveal salvation. Jesus said this, you must be born again. Born again means that you've got a flesh, and you need the Spirit of God. If you want to understand what I'm talking about, you need the Spirit of God in your heart to open your eyes, Amen. and to see things. You can't see it purely by argument. You've got to have your eyes opened by the Holy Spirit. And then finally, Jesus said this, what do you think of this? He said this, before Abraham was, I am. Now the word I am is the name of God. In, in Exodus chapter four, when Moses came to, when God came to Moses, God said, God said, this is my name, I am. As in the dog food. Means self-existent one. And Jesus used the name for God for himself and said, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. I am God. Now, the Jews wanted to stone him and throw, throw stones at him and kill him because they were saying that he was blaspheming against God. We, we have our dear Mormon friends here, sir. Dear Mormons, nice to see you. But we, we believe that Christ is God. God in the flesh. And he says, he says, I am before Abraham, I, I am, yeah? You don't both Me, right. So, it's important to realize that, I'll finish and then I'll let you speak. It's important to realize, number one, that God is spirit and truth. Number two, that if you're going to know God, you need the spirit of God inside you. You need to be born again. The spirit of God come in your heart. You must be born again. And thirdly, you need to realize that these people, my dear friend here, and others would not agree that Jesus is God incarnate, God in the flesh. And if you miss that, I'll tell you a quick story, and then I'll let anyone come in, yeah? In the First World War, there was a, a millionaire, he had a picture of his son. It was a scruffy picture, rubbish picture. But he loved the picture, and he had it in his mansion. One day his son was killed in the First World War. So, he had his will read out, he wanted his will read out, so the family came, but they're all greedy, they're all nasty. They come to the mansion, and the lawyer said, before I read the will out, we're going to have an auction for this picture, the scruffy picture of his son. So they had the auction. No, I'm just listening. They had the auction. Nobody wanted to buy it because it was scruffy. Only one person bought it. The janitor, the cleaner, bought the picture. And then the lawyer said, I'm going to read out the will. And he said this, the person awesome. who's bought the picture of my son inherits the million. You see, it was precious to him. The son was precious, so he inherited all the father's wealth. Jesus is like a scruffy picture to the world. But if you take him in your heart, you are blessed by the father with salvation. But if you reject him, you miss the main thing. If you have the son, you have everything. You have eternal life. If you reject the son, You've lost it all. Over to you, bro. Over to you, bro. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's interesting because... I feel like a bit of an empathy. <laughs> because if you kind of, <laughs> kind of listen to both sides here... Now, all I'm going to say, right, basically, is I'm going to shoot off because someone's just told me I'm going to point across. I need to go. I don't know if he likes me, I don't know if he doesn't. No, no, everyone's entitled to their opinion, and I will happily say I'm one of the people in the world. I'm sorry, there's many few of these days. They will set up, step up and do their opinion because everyone in David is going to fight with people.
Okay. What's your name? Paul. Right. Well, if you're a cooperator of all people, and we're all the same, why do we all think that this is discriminating races and everything else? Where do these words come from? And it's not from human nature. Because God made us, God did this, God did everything to us. God is us, apparently. So God is doing good. So God is going against human nature, not us. The Christian paradigm, the Christian worldview. You're debating an atheist, you've got to understand the atheist worldview. You're debating a Muslim, you've got to understand the Muslim worldview, the Islamic worldview. The Christian worldview is that God created Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, the creation was perfect, but God, uh, mankind rebelled against God, and that's how mankind's heart became corrupted. That's how racism and all the evils, if you remember, yeah. Cain so killed Abel. Uh, murder, jealousy, right at the beginning of creation. So the, the Christian paradigm is creation was perfect, mankind rebelled, Jesus come to redeem mankind, one day he's coming back to make a new heaven and earth. That is the paradigm. Like I said, you cannot have love without free will. It created that like nice They rebelled against him. You can't. He could have made the robots so they didn't rebel, and they rebelled. The other thing I want to say: nobody here, I don't care who they are, Christian, non-Christian, nobody has the full answer to suffering. The Christianity gives you certain pointers, certain helps, but nobody. If if someone came here now whose mama just died of cancer and come to me, will a nice, neat, philosophical, perfect answer give them comfort? No. no. So God didn't just give you a perfect philosophical answer. He came down and suffered and died for you on a cross. He showed compassion. He showed compassion and love for you and dying on a cross for you. That was not neat philosophy. That was God in action. 